Wanting that punchy pro sounding drum mix with less than ideal recordings? Let's make that happen. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Emily Bowie. I'm a producer and engineer here in wonderful Music City, USA, Nashville, Tennessee. We've got time stamps for your convenience, but if you'd like to help the channel out just a little bit further, consider hitting that big old thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. It's totally free to do that with no hidden fees. And if you'd like, please leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Using sample replacements is nothing new, especially on drums. But instead of replacing the entire recording, try blending a sample in. And just like that bottle of Johnny Blue, blending can produce wonderful things. So let's take a look at how I like to combine real recorded drums and samples to get that punchy pro sound that we all love to hear. So I've got a session here that was recorded in a home studio environment many, 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 many moons ago. I think this was probably recorded with only three microphones. I know there were only three on the drums. So we've got a lot of room to work. I'm gonna leave some of the instruments in here, but we're really just gonna be focusing on the drums, but I'll go ahead and play a little snippet of this just to give you an idea of what we're working with. All right, so the drums, pretty minimal stuff. There's the kick pretty much all the way through that's kind of driving the song along with the bass. And then there is actually a separate snare part that we can get to in another video. But today I just wanted to focus on this kick and show you how I like to blend in those drum samples. Now, what I like to do first is just go ahead and duplicate this because we only had one kick mic. It was just sort of in and sort of out. We were just trying to combine that sound a little bit uh, with what we had. So the kick is recorded with a Beta 52 and we are just duplicating that in Pro Tools. So this kick S for sample is just a straight up duplicate of the recorded kick. Next thing that I wanna do is add trigger because this is probably the best, the simplest drum replacement piece of plugin software equipment that you want to have. Um, this thing is, you know, a lifesaver sometimes. And I'm really, really digging the Blackbird expansion. Shocker. Um, I mean, does anything sound bad from them? I don't know. Um, this is all included with the Blackbird expansion pack, and I just left it up to them. This is the sound that they combined together with all of their mics, and it works for me. So let's just listen to the recorded kick and see what we're working with. So not bad, um, you know, there's a little bit of bleed in there, but I like it, it works, it glues everything together. So let's get something else in there to beef this thing up to add a little bit more punch. So we've got our duplicate track here and I've already selected the Blackbird drum kit here, but you know, go through those, go through your samples, go through your expansion packs and see which ones fit with the song that you're mixing. So let's go ahead and bring Trigger in and this is completely, the mix is all the way up to 100%. This is completely replacing that recorded kick drum. And we'll listen to that by itself first. So that sounds fantastic, actually. Now let's bring it in with our recorded. And as you notice, I don't take this down very much. I'm not trying to replace it. I'm just trying to 
have it fill up the spaces that were lacking with our recorded because I didn't have two mics. Uh, I'm just using the one and it's the Beta 52, which is kind of just picking up some of the lower things. And we're not getting any sort of good punch and uh, attack on the recorded kick. And so that's why we're blending in this one. And we're keeping the recorded kick blended in pretty heavily. Well, that sounds pretty good. So let's see what it sounds like with and without the sample. Here's without. Kind of flat. Bring in the sample. So that's gonna cut through nicely with everything. And this is a pretty, you know, raw and, and kind of rough sounding track. And that's intentional. That was specifically, you know, the, the artist wanted that kind of style for this song. And so we don't wanna take that away with having such a clean sounding drum sample. We wanna keep that grittiness in there with our original recorded track. Now there is one more step to this mixing technique that I wanna go over, but first, I'd like to invite you to check out my brand new mixing templates. These mixing templates are for Pro Tools, Luna, and Studio One users. These templates will get you quicker, professional sounding mixes, and don't forget to check out the mixing course, which can help you build your portfolio with all the included multi-tracks, as well as an in-depth look at how I like to mix certain styles of music. This is also a really great way that you can help support this channel while learning great analog techniques that have all been adapted to work completely in the box. All right, let's get back to the mix. So after combining the sample with the original recorded track, I like to EQ the original one. I feel like the samples are already gonna be kind of, maybe not heavily processed, some might be, but at least somewhat processed. And I don't wanna heavily EQ the recording either. So once again, we're gonna go back to Blackbird here with the kit EQ. This is the N105. This is the console emulation EQ plugin that they have from Blackbird's Studio A. And what I'm doing is I'm just boosting that nice kick drum sound area at 56 here. We're boosting that just under 3 dB. And I'm also cutting out that 400 range. This one is at 390 and we're pulling out about four dBs of that. So let's hear what that sounds like in the mix. It really tightens it together, gives it that extra little attack with the punchiness, the roundness. We're filling out the area that we need to fill out on the bottom, and it's just gonna come together really nicely once we get all of the drums together. So if you've got some tracks that maybe weren't recorded in the best environment, and you're looking to kind of fill that out a little bit better, make it sound a little bit more professional sounding, commercial sounding like we all want our mixes to sound like, then try this technique out. Don't completely replace what you've got unless it's just something that totally needs to be scrapped and re-recorded. You've got something to work with here. Have your own recorded track heavily blended in with that so that they're working nicely together and one's not really completely replacing the other. I think you're really gonna like the results. If you did enjoy this video and found something helpful in it, please consider giving it a big old thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can see more content just like this. And while you're at it, don't forget to check out the links in the description so that you can browse through all of the mixing templates and mixing courses that I have. Also, mix breakdowns and my brand new just released Notion dashboard template. 
if this is something that you want to start getting into and further in your business, whether it is in production, studio work, songwriting, that dashboard can really help you grow your business because as entrepreneurs, we all need to stay productive and organized in growing our own business. The support from everyone has been amazing. This really helps me to continue to put out content and I truly appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching y'all. We'll talk soon.